Hi guys and welcome back. Today I'm jumping in with this giant watercolor painting. I tested out a new way of stretching it before I painted it. I also revisited a theme that I absolutely love painting. So this painting was something that I really enjoyed. I learned a lot from and there were specific things that that I really feel like I had like an epiphany on while I was working on this, specifically on the way that I approach color. And speaking of that, I did take a Skillshare class on colors. It was incredibly helpful for me to figure out some of the things that I've been struggling with. I actually reference this class pretty frequently. She has a lot of really helpful points and things that I can use in different pieces. So sometimes some pieces I, I need a certain technique and others, another technique works better. So I will have this class linked down in the description, but, but Skillshare is actually the sponsor for this class. I love working with them. Like I always say, I, I absolutely love their product. It's something that I am constantly researching from and getting new ideas and learning new approaches to the things that I already do. So Skillshare is just a really amazing resource to be able to get a lot of inspiration and, and resources as an artist. I love it. So, so I do have a link down in the description that will give you two months free. So you can go check it out and see if you like it, see if you can learn from it. Uh, again, I do have that code down there where you can go check that out. So I want to talk really quickly about the stretching experience for this piece. And then I'll get back to the colors and to the class that I studied and some of the points that I learned from that. But at the very beginning, you saw where I was doing this thing where I was dipping the paper in the water and then I was sticking it down to wood, trying to tape it, learning a very significant error to my, my plans. But, but I have done a little bit of research on stretching watercolors before you paint with them. I actually prefer gluing them down to wood panels, my watercolor paper that is, so that it doesn't buckle at all. And it's just completely smooth and flat and it also has a little bit more weight to it. So I, I really love that method. But for this one, since it was huge and I didn't have a piece of wood that was the right kind of wood and the right kind of size, I wanted to try stretching it. So with larger pieces of paper, I found that the warping of the paper is a lot more prevalent. It it has, or at least it has the potential to have a lot more warping and waves and a lot more dramatic warping. So I tested this out and then I realized that all of my tapes lose their stick as soon as they touch the wet paper. So in the little tutorial that I watched where they did do this, I actually had this water activated craft paper tape. And it wasn't until I was actually trying to tape it down that I realized that that was kind of key. So I think that I will get some for myself. I can test this technique out a little bit more and then I can tell you guys about it when I actually figure it out. But, but it surprisingly ended up working out pretty well even without that tape. It seemed to adhere to the wood still pretty well and then once it was done drying, it remained pretty flat. There was a little bit of warping to it, but then once I was working on the final painting, it didn't really get much worse than that. So it seemed to have helped. And I think that if I was able to adhere it down while it was drying the first time, I think it probably would have minimized any of that warping. So the thing that I definitely struggled the most with on this piece was the color palette. I had a feeling of what I wanted in it or an emotion or an atmosphere that I wanted. So I wanted it, of course, to feel rainy and misty and kind of when it's like on the verge of becoming fall. And I just couldn't quite make that materialize into a color palette. I had a lot of different versions that all of them I felt like they were good. They were good versions and I should like them, but I just couldn't really like emotionally attach to them. It just didn't feel right. I was really struggling with it. So I do do my color comps almost entirely digitally now. I That way I can go through a lot of them. I am really familiar with my own paints, so I know the range that I can get as far as colors. So that way I can make sure that I'm not going super saturated in my digital comp in a way that I could never match it with my watercolors. So, so because I'm really familiar with those, I, I can do the digital color comps a little bit better. At least I, I've been more adventurous with those lately. But anyways, that allowed me to do a lot of different color comps <laughs> and a lot of them that I thought, oh, well, maybe this one's the right one. No, maybe this one's the right one. 
And that's when I needed a little step away from it, a break. And then I went and watched the class from Victo Nye over on Skillshare called Color Masterclass. And again, this is one that I've watched before and it's always so helpful. There's a lot of different breakdowns on how to think about and approach color. And of course, one of the ones that I somehow always, almost always, I should give myself a little bit of credit. I don't always forget, but sometimes I forget where I get really excited about the colors and then I jump past the values of the colors. So I like to create a layer on top of all the colors that is just the straight gray and then I change it to the color mode. That way it takes away all the color and I can just see the saturation or the, the value. There we go. And that really helped me clear up some issues that were still there, but I was still not happy with the color palettes until I kind of just wiped those away. And another point that she had was letting a certain color really take the focus and then all the other colors kind of step back and play secondary roles. And that's when it hit me that I had, I think I had like at least two or three colors that were all equally saturated and in different areas on the piece. And it was just a lot going on that was relatively saturated and it just wasn't working with that mood that I wanted. And they were all kind of fighting for that attention at the same time in equal amounts. And that's when I decided that I wanted to go back to the initial thing that I had in my head, which is something that I've already painted basically, but I really love it is this like yellow raincoat. So I figured out what kind of yellow I wanted, which is a little bit more on like in some areas, it's a little bit more of a cool yellow. In other areas, it merges into this like burnt orange. And once I had that as like the star of the show, then I started coming in and adding supporting casts of the characters. So, so the colors that I chose for the rest of the piece were these really desaturated purples for that undershirt or the shirt she's wearing under her jacket and then her umbrella. And then this teal kind of a color that would be in the background and in certain areas like her jeans a little bit. And because those colors were so much more desaturated, they really just acted as a very supportive element so that it didn't look too, too monochrome, but it still had this interest to it. There were certain areas that still had the color to it but there was that main focus. And I was just so relieved when I put this color comp together because it just immediately connected with me. It felt right. And I think that that's a lesson that I can learn because a lot of times when I'm working on a piece, I, I work on the color comp and sometimes I just have to like convince myself that it's the right one. And I think that it's just like one of those things that you just kind of know, you know when it's right. And a lot of times I move forward on a color palette that I, I think is right, but I don't know it's right. I don't know that it's something that I'm excited or interested in exploring. So, so I think maybe that's my big takeaway is that I should listen to my gut more. <laughs> if it doesn't feel right, then I need to keep working on it. That I can figure something out that just sparks that, that interest and the connection that I have with the piece. So. So yeah, that's definitely an area that I think I'll be working on more of, but I do think that really learning to let other areas be toned down quite a bit more is an area that's really going to improve the atmosphere that I have for my pieces. And then I just had to clean up a few loose ends at the very end. Somehow this piece had a lot more things that were left almost undone than I normally have. I think I usually completely finish up an area and then move on. But this one I was hopping around a lot and I actually really liked that. I felt a lot more engaged. I wasn't getting too bored or feeling like I was getting too repetitive with, with the watercolors. So I will definitely do that more, but it did end up meaning there, there were a lot of small things that hadn't been painted yet. So things like the drawstring on our hoodie and other things like that. So I had to finish all that up. And then I got to pull out my gold paint and add in all these little details that just really brought it to life. I made sure to mix several of my gold paints together so that I could get kind of this burnt orangey gold color that really fit with the palette. I didn't want to go in with, with the color of gold that just would really stand out in a very 
wrong way from all the yellows that I already had. I just wanted it to be really like a extension of the colors that were already in the piece. And I do have links down in the description that will show you what I used to create this painting from the paints to the brushes and all that stuff. That's all listed down below if you're interested. And don't forget to check out Skillshare. There is that link down in the description that will give you two months for free to go check it out. I also have a link to my art shop where you can get the 8x10 print version of this piece or the original painting. And I will be back next week with another art video. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you then.